Here's a review on a Gravely ZT52 HD. This is not their bottom end, and this is not their top end. You're looking at a little over $6,000 with a bagger on there. And the bagger, they're pretty proud of that. It's a power unit. The power head is uh, driven by uh, the motor off belts and it's got to blow quite a long ways back there to get into the bagger it seems to work okay but it has to be pretty darn dry they have to add a huge wheel a oh, weight kit excuse me on the front so it doesn't pull wheelies my overall impression on this is it's okay i'm a toro and john deere fan I've used the both of them they are high quality better guarantee I think maybe a little better unit these are a little cheaper but you get what you pay for this has an upgraded Kawasaki motor I've had lots of them uh, prefer the water cooled this is the air cooled that's all they have available on these models right now a uh, lot of problems with the dealer prep that's the third uh, blower for the uh, power assisted bagger on this. Uh, the first two just literally exploded, didn't function properly. I mean, uh, and one of them literally exploded. Something happened in the peller system there and literally exploded. Shot pieces right out of the housing and everything. Um, the first eight hours of use, this was in the shop uh, three times and it ended up being in the shop more than I ever got to use it. Overall impressions, uh, lots of power. Uh, spins the tires too easy. You're skidding the lawn nonstop. I'm a professional equipment operator and own a landscape company, a tree service. So I have a lot of time on these units. Um, this thing's pretty powerful. I'm surprised for uh, a little 24 horse motor. The bagging unit is ridiculously cheap. It's a weak part. If you look at this, you have to pull that handle on the back side here and bend it out of those protruding two pieces of uh, joined uh, L metal there you see sticking out. Those are two pieces of L channel welded together. You literally have to bend that out to uh, release the bag, which is just ridiculous. So that's how you have to pull and bend it out. Do the same thing to close it. It's just destined to break. You can see we've already broken all the uh, uh, clips that held that together, and I put bolts in there. Um, what can I say more about this unit? It's okay. That's all I can say, but there's a lot of flaws in the, especially when you add a bagger. If this thing was without a bagger, it would probably be uh, a pretty good unit. It's got a welded deck, although I'm not so sure I'm sold on those had many bigger machines that had stamp decks and I never had a problem with them. Workers have run into trees and stumps and all kinds of problems. They, they keep pushing these welded decks that are such a, a good thing. Yeah, I've never had any problems. You'd have to be awful stupid to damage one of those. I added some other goodies to this. You'll see there right behind the, the uh, motor, that was open and when the blower blows uh, debris into the bag and dust and dirt and everything it would get into the air cleaner and literally you couldn't uh, hardly mow they stayed in my place here which is about a three quarters of an acre without it plugging up the air cleaner and you can't pull this out without hitting up here so I had to break this off this was was hinged here at one time I had to just literally break it off because you can't get this cover on and off to access the the mower next step up would be to be add a canister uh, air cleaner, but they won't allow it. Gets too much air and apparently causes uh, some problems with some, they claim, with some EPA baloney. I'll fabricate one myself here. You can buy a universal kit and I'll put one on there eventually to get the air cleaner up above the motor and out of the way as soon as I figure out where to attach it because this wonderful motor is just a plastic ABS housing. They really cheap these things up. This thing looks like it has two fuel tanks. It doesn't. The other one's fake. 
This is the only fuel tank here. It uh, does have a fuel gauge on it integrated into the unit on top. I do like that. It has a big filler. And I do like that. This other side here is just a fake hollow tube with some controls in it uh, and a cup holder you can't reach. That's so far behind you. The seat uh, tips up. It's on the bottom end of the scale compared to other units like John Deere and Toro and so forth. Even Club Cadet's got uh, a better seat. This does have articulating armrests on it, but they don't move very well and they're very flimsy. The whole seat is just okay. I wouldn't write home about it. They do a lot of raving about their frame being so heavy duty. Well, it might have a little bit bigger tubing in size, like by a quarter inch. It's paper thin. It flexes a lot. The warranty on this is much less than everybody else. I think it's 50 hours and one year, where everybody else is 300 hours, three years, things like that. Um, they're pretty proud of these things, yet they don't stand behind them. Again, like I said, I had this in the shop more than I ever had a chance to use it. I told them just to keep it and I'll pay for the couple hours that were on it at the very beginning. Uh, after the second uh, return for major repairs. And uh, they said, no, try it one more time. I had it the third time. I had about eight hours on it. I said, I didn't want to come by and pick it up. And uh, they forced me to come take it. So uh, what can I say about this? Uh, the parts are expensive and uh, proprietary, just like about everybody else is. But uh, overall, uh, it does an okay job. You can see my lawn here. I've got quite a bit out there, but it's still just about three quarters of an acre when you add it all together. You're not going to see it all. Not the best looking lawn, but it does a good clean job. It does pick it up. Other issue with it is uh, you better have that mower down on the ground. If you try to, to mow it a little t higher than two and a half inches uh, for the heat, let it grow a little bit higher, like two and three quarters, three inches, what I like to do in the summertime. Or when you want to uh, pick up leaves, it doesn't do worth a darn. And that was the main intention of this. I had a non-powered John Deere, non-power bag John Deere, and it, it could bag twice as much. It could pick up golf balls and two-inch round rock. It, it was a, I was, it scared me what it could suck up compared to this thing. This, on the other hand, blows all the uh, leaves out the front right over here by the blower. Just blows them out in front of the unit as fast as you can suck them up. It'll pick up about uh, two thirds of them and blow one third away from you, and you keep chasing them around the yard. Overall, I got mixed feelings about the unit. If I had to do it again, I would not. John Deere would be my one of my first choice. Uh, that or Toro. They make a superior uh, unit, lots of more safety features on it. Um, they stand behind them. I uh, like John Deere's, got the best uh, warranty. They do cost a couple bucks more than the Toro, but you don't like it, <laughs> bring it back. We'll give you your money back or give you a different unit that you do like. We'll get you what you, what you want, to make sure you're happy. These guys, <laughs> you bought it, go away. We don't care if you drop six grand. Uh, the one I looked at other than this was 10,000. And that's with my contractor discount and uh, buying it at the end of the year in the winter time. So I'm getting a, a, a unit that's already almost a year old by the time I pick it up. Even though it's new out of the box, you're buying it at the end of the season. It, when you start the next season, it's already a year old. So it does evaluate in price. I would say uh, if you had choices, uh, this wouldn't be in the top of my list.